Okay, welcome to the TechRite Controls website. Uh, today we're going to have a bit of a look at our TechRite ignition module. Uh, this is, uh, has a number of variants. This particular one we're going to use today is a combustion fan pressure switch model. Uh, there's atmospheric models, there's models that, uh, with pilots, uh, different spark times, different numbers of tries for ignition. It could be one try for ignition or three tries. Um, you may have local sense or remote sense. Local sense means that you're sparking and sensing off a single electrode. Uh, this particular one we've got, as I said, is a combustion fan pressure switch model. We're going to light this burner here just with a direct spark setup. So we'll fire that up now and we'll, we'll just demonstrate how it should work in normal operation. Now, we've got a um, we've got this light set up here. This light's indicating that the fan's been turned on. Now. One thing I'll mention before we go any further is that this is a 240 volt module. So all the connections to your fan, to your pressure switch, to your valve, they're all 240 volt connections. So make sure you've got the power off before you do any work, okay? Because it's, uh, you could put yourself in danger. So remember, it is a 240 volt module. Okay, what it's going to look for in this situation with the combustion fan and pressure switch, it's going to wait, make sure the pressure switch is open because if the pressure switch is jammed closed, we could get a dangerous situation. So we make sure it's open. We've got a switch down here which will simulate that. We've turned the fan on, so now it's waiting for the pressure switch to close. Now you'll see there's a little LED flashing down there. That's indicating that we're waiting for the fan. There's a number of codes that that will give you in long and short um, flashes and you can download all those codes from the website. There's a few of the more basic ones on the box, but the full list is on the website. So we'll just make our pressure switch by turning this on here. Okay, we, the valve would have opened, let the gas through, it sparks, lights the gas, and then we're sensing a flame. Now you'll see there's a green lead down there that's on there. That means we're sensing the flame. Now, of course, if it doesn't sense the flame for some reason, it will just light and then it will possibly keep sparking because it doesn't realise the gas is there and then it will go out. This is a common thing we get if the polarity is the wrong way around. If you're active and neutral the wrong way around, you won't sense the flame properly. And that's the case with all these types of modules. I'll just demonstrate that now. We, we've got a power point here that we've purposely put up the wrong way, so I'll demonstrate what happens. We'll just turn this one off. By, we'll actually just open the pressure switch. Boom, gas goes off. Turns the fan on again because it wants to retry. But anyway, in this case, we won't let it do that. Just unplug the power, put it into the our power source that has got the wrong polarity. Turn it on. Same thing, it tries to turn the fan on. Now it's going to wait for the pressure switch. It tries to spark, but you'll notice it keeps sparking. It's not, um, it, it doesn't realise the flame's there, so it'll keep sparking for. The spark time on this particular module is five seconds, so it'll keep sparking, and then it says, hang on, we, we, we haven't got a flame, I'm going to go out because uh, we've got a dangerous situation. So um, we might just show a close-up of that uh, because it's sometimes a bit hard to pick up, so we'll just show a close-up of that now of how it should work and then how it works if, you, uh, if you've got your polarity the wrong way around. So we'll just do that now. Okay. Okay, we can hear it sparking there, and uh, it lights okay, and immediately it stops sparking. We can't hear it sparking anymore, and the green LED will be on at this stage. Okay, this time it lights, but we can still hear it spark, and that's an indication that we're not sensing the flame, and the, the green LED would not have come on in that case. Okay, you can see what happens there. That when it's the wrong way around it, we're just going to keep sparking and then go out. Now, that can also happen on a few other cases, and I'll demonstrate those now. We'll just turn this combustion fan off again, or the, sorry, the pressure switch, and I'll plug it into the correct outlet. Okay. We've uh, turned the fan on again. So we close our pressure switch. Okay, we light. Now, you've got to remember this flame sensing circuit is a microamp circuit so it's a very small amount of current so all your connections are critical and particularly your earthing we would recommend that 
you a burner such as this, a metal uh, burner, you would earth that to your mains earth or to the, certainly to the uh, to the frame of your appliance because you need to get a good earth. If you're going to rely on screw connections through your pipe work, you're probably going to run into trouble down the track. In this case, we've actually got a join in our uh, earth here, so we can disconnect to demonstrate what will happen. I disconnect our earth. You'll notice the green light starting to go on and off because it's not sensing the flame properly. Bang, she goes out because it says, hang on, there's something wrong with our flame sensing. The flame's going on and off. We're going to lock out because you've got to remember this is essentially a safety device. So we'll just uh, push that up again. Now, one more thing I might just demonstrate while we're, we've got it set up here is that, and once again, oh, by the way, if you do go into lockout for any reason where you've got some sort of flame failure or flame sensing issue, to reset the module, you must disconnect the power and reconnect it. That's the only way you reset it. So I'll just do that now. Now, in this case, I've left the pressure switch on. So uh, we'll power it up again. You'll see the LEDs on, but we're not getting our fan on because it's sensing that, hang on, this switch is already closed. What's, what's going on? So it's, once again, that's, a, um, that, that, that's indicating there's a pressure switch problem. So it'll just sit there and it won't do anything unless that pressure switch opens, which I'll do now. We open the pressure switch. It says, OK, we're happy now. Turn the fan on now. Once again, we'll wait for the pressure switch to close, which we'll do now. Now, once again, as I said earlier, because it's such a small amount of current flowing in this circuit, if we if we have a problem with our sense wire, the connection's not good, or uh, our electrode's a bit dodgy, once again, it'll start sparking again. And it's always a giveaway that if it's running and it starts sparking while it's running, that you've got a flame sense problem because if, you're, if you've got a good flame sense circuit, it won't try to spark because it believes there's a flame there. Uh, the other thing that I should mention is your uh, spark cable. Um, occasionally we get issues where you can hear it sparking, but it's not actually sparking at the electrode. It could be breaking down against the frame that's laying against the, f uh, the frame of the appliance. And the other thing is that cable, when it's sparking, is a, there's a lot of electrical noise there, so it may interfere with other things. So rule of thumb is keep it as short as you can and try and keep it away from other cables because you may introduce a bit of electrical noise into thermostats and things like that and it could cause them to play up a little bit too. So just be a little bit careful how you wire it and try and keep that cable short. And once again, if it's not lighting and you can hear it spark, you've just got to try and make sure it's sparking where it should be because it could be breaking down somewhere. It doesn't happen a great deal of times, but it does happen, so just be aware of that one. Um, I think we've covered most of the bases on this, so uh, thank you for listening.